If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hey everyone, you already know, it's me, T1 Glistener Elf. Alright, stolen intro aside, if you play older formats, eternal formats, especially Legacy, you might be familiar with the concept of the wish board. Now, the wish board is your sideboard that you're able to access with one of a number of cards that all happen to feature the word wish. They are Burning Wish, Cunning Wish, those are the most common ones. The only one that's in modern is Glittering Wish. Now, Charbelcher uses Burning Wish. It uses it to go get, for example, a sideboard Empty the Warrens. It's why they can only play three empty in the main board and have the fourth one in the sideboard, that's why. Or High Tide might play Cunning Wish so that it can get a sideboard Brain Freeze or Blue Sun Zenith or a whole bunch of cards that it has utility access to. Well, you may also be familiar with Sneak and Show trying to use that. There was a time when Omni Show was a deck in the format, the biggest deck in Legacy. It was when Treasure Cruise had been banned, but Dig Through Time was still legal, and everyone could play this wasteland proof, relatively budget, because again, mono blue, show and tell deck. You'd show and tell out an Omniscience or an Emrakul, and you went through one of a number of ways. Obviously, show and tell Emrakul is a thing. We'll get to that in just a second. There was this release the ants combo, which was really kind of really cool to watch. All right. And then you have regular Sneak and Show, and if you've played Legacy about ever in your lifetime, you probably know, that, know how that goes. You can actually put the two of them together, and this is something that I've seen tried in a way that I've never really been fully satisfied with, so this is my attempt at trying to fuse a Cunning Wish deck with a Sneak and Show deck. So here we go. So in case you don't know how Sneak and Show works, let's say you're not a Legacy aficionado or you just haven't seen it for whatever reason. You start off by, <laughs> you're trying to cheat into play the biggest, baddest brawlers that there are. So we're running four copies of Emrakul the Eon's Torn, and we're running four copies of Grizzlebran. Now, both of these cards are awesome in their own rights. I'm actually not sure which one is better. Sometimes it seems like it's one, sometimes it seems like it's the other. Emrakul wins you the game on the spot. Like, you, one attack and they're done. If that isn't enough to actually finish them off, they don't have any permanents, they can't stop you on the swing back. Grizzlebrand lets you load up on more cards, say Force of Will, uh, and it actually matters a lot more when it comes to sneak attack than show and tell because with Grizzlebrand especially, you can continue drawing to find Lotus Petal Emrakul, and you can just win right then. So I, I don't know which is better, I love them both. I love you both, guys. You're pretty sick. I think Emrakul's supposed to, well, Emrakul's an it. it. It's she, but no, it. It It's Lovecraftian. I don't, I don't see anything there. <laughs> Alright, so how do we cheat these things into play? We have, first of all, what do you bring to class? That's every time I cast this card, I ask the question, what did you bring to class? Each player puts an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land. So basically a permanent if it's not a planeswalker, because this has not been errated to include planeswalkers, and puts it into play. Well, generally speaking, aside from the mirror or some weird matches like 12 post, yours is going to be bigger. And reanimator, actually, that's another one. So as you can tell, show and tell isn't great for every match, but against a lot of decks, there's nothing they can put out that competes. Uh, and then, just in case, and that's three mana, so for four mana, and five, we have Sneak Attack. This one lets you drop a creature from your hand, it gets haste, so high Emrakul, and you do have to sag it at the end of turn. Okay, so importantly, it, I should note, Show and Tell puts it on the battlefield, it's not cast, so you don't get the extra turn off of Emrakul. So Emrakul does have to make it a turn. Sneak Attack, that's not a problem, at all. At all. <laughs> They're just done. Okay. Now, again, don't, sometimes one is better, sometimes the other is better. Sneak attack can't really be broken in, in decks with similar strategies. Um, but on the other hand, it can be stopped by Phyrexian Revoker in Death and Taxes, or Mud. It can be stopped by, or doesn't Eldrazi run that sometimes? It can be stopped by Pithing Needle, etc, etc, etc. 
Okay. And then lastly, we have a one of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Better than all. Just as an extra win condition, sometimes they can stop your creatures. Jace the Mind Sculptor gets you out of that. So, he's, he's pretty cool, I hear. Shout out to the Magic Man Sam for your The Boogeyman video with Jace the Mind Sculptor. Better than all. You're awesome like that. Shout out to Patrick Chapin and Sprout for Jace the Mind Sculptor. Better than all. Um, we have four Force of Will for our counter spell package because it's a blue deck and this is what you do in Legacy. In all seriousness, it, it is okay to put yourself down a card if you're going to win very shortly thereafter. That card disadvantage doesn't usually matter too much because you're going to win, usually anyway, immediately after that, you know, on the turn thereafter. Once you get enough mana to show and tell, etc. Uh, on that note, we have three Spell Pierce. Just cheap removal. The fact that they can pay two to get out of it often doesn't matter because, again, we're actually ending the game fairly quickly in this deck. Next, we have a single copy of Flusterstorm. Similar to Spell Pierce, but it also gives us some mainboard Storm Hate, which Storm is a deck that can prey on what we're doing. That is true. Okay, next. Because, again, blue deck with fetch lands, we have Brainstorm. Shoutouts to my camera here for picking out the faces on the Brainstorms. That's awesome. I love my camera. All right. Surely you know what this thing does. But the fact that we're running eight fetch lands makes this all the better. All the better. All right. Now for some ponder action. Same bit, <laughs> gives us three cards for each in the deck, and if we still can't find it, we can shuffle. And if we don't like the cards that we had to put back, well then they're, they're fetch lands. Also, I forgot not to do that particular art for this video. Should have done the M12 one. Uh, next, we have a single copy of Preordain. Now, usually, this is a card that sees more play in your uh, traditional sneak and show decks. And the reason is because early in the game, you want those extra cantrips to find your game plan, find your combo pieces, or some interaction if you have it, etc. We are only running one Preordain in this list. And that is because we happen to have three copies of Cunning Wish, and this is where the wish board kicks in. We don't have Omniscience, we have Cunning Wish. Now, Cunning Wish lets us get an instant from outside the game, which includes the sideboard, it is the sideboard in a sanction event. <laughs> Reveal that card, put it in your hand, then this gets exiled on resolution. We have a lot. <laughs> that does mean, of course, we aren't going to be able to get one half of our combo piece. We would need a creature for show and tell or sneak attack. But we can get a sneak and show replacement from our sideboard. But before we get to that, we need to talk about the land base. We have three volcanic islands. Only three. Even though there's some red mana, we actually aren't going too deep into red mana. It's, it does matter in the sideboard occasionally. Uh, but with eight fetch lands, we can get there. Uh, we have three islands. And by the way, if you want to add a Dak Faden to the list, which I considered, maybe take an island out and add another volcanic, perhaps. Uh, we have, doesn't matter which blue fetch lands, as long as you have eight of them, I picked these. This is actually very much not optimal because if you want to play around Pithing Needle, you do two, 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 and two. So maybe take two of these out for Misty Rainforest and take two of these out for Polluted Deltas and there you go. That diversity is the reason why, uh, or Pithing Needle is the reason why you see that diversity. Now, these are all kind of slow. If we're trying to make it up to show and tell or sneak attack going up one mana at a time, that's not going to get the job done a lot of times. So instead, we have three Ancient Tombs. The fact that it deals two damage to us for two mana isn't really consequential because, again, we're winning the game awfully quickly. All right, so there we go on that. We have two copies of City of Traders, two mana, colorless, but when you play another land, you have to sacrifice it. So. Uh, but that's often not really a problem because when we play another land, two plus whatever we just played equals show and tell. And give it one more and we have sneak attack. So it usually doesn't matter as much as you might think. Excuse me, I'm a little bit sick, so <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, next we have four copies of Lotus Petal. 
Okay, so this is silly. <laughs> you know you're a fast deck when you're willing to play Lotus Petal. And of course we are. Ancient Tomb or City of Traders plus Lotus Petal equals we get to go off on turn one. And a turn one Grizzlebrand or Emrakul is pretty hard to deal with for a lot of decks. That is a lot of mana. Alright, now let's pack these up for a bit because we have a wish board. Often I can just put the sideboard, show you the card, drop it down. No, they're all extremely important in the context of this deck. Alright, actually before I do that, let's let me let me say. Often it's not the case that a wish board will be 15 cards you will get with whatever your wish card is. There might be some, for instance, that aren't. Uh, take for example, High Tide might have Snapcaster or Vendillion Click or Vincer or Teferi or something in the sideboard you couldn't normally get with Cunning Wish. Charbelcher, Char 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 will have Xanted Swarm in there as well, uh, or some Pyroblast. Wow, <laughs> I told you I was sick. Or a good or response, <laughs> something like that. Uh, we happen to have three copies of Blood Moon. It's the only card in our sideboard that we cannot get with Cunning Wish. And it matters in a lot of decks. You might be thinking, well, wait a minute, doesn't that hurt us? Well, we have three basic items. This is part of the reason why. Uh, it's because of Blood Moon. <laughs> Sometimes when you can just rush out a turn one or two Blood Moon, you shut down the other deck, the opposing deck, entirely, and so it doesn't really matter. Now. 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 My voice will last just a little bit longer. We're almost done. We're almost done. Now we have 12 copies here, and I've sorted them not alphabetically or anything like that, but by what they do. So for our bounce effects, we start off with a single copy of Echoing Truth, if we need to get rid of a lot of something. So well and good for two mana. We have a single copy of Wipe Away, which is uncounterable and deals with any permanent. Note it says target permanent, so we could get a land, and this matters for Caracas, because Caracas is a problem for this deck, or at least it can be. It is possible to get around Caracas with Sneak Attack if you can uh, use the ability twice, but for Show and Tell, not so much, so Wipe Away is important to do that. At end of turn, return Caracas to their hand, uh, go off, or something like that. Uh, next we have Flusterstorm. Just another copy, this one's in the sideboard, it helps us to go and fight Storm. And speaking of Storm, hey, sometimes you'll want Flusterstorm, sometimes you'll want Mind Break Trap. If they cast three or more spells this turn, you may pay zero rather than its mana cost exile. Okay, so actually, actually, I will say that this is one that I do bring in occasionally, I do against Charbelcher, because it is quite likely, actually, that you will not get up to three mana against Charbelcher in order to uh, in order to counter their Charbelcher, and so lo and behold, we end up doing that. I, I end up bringing it in in that one match. Otherwise, you can keep it in the sideboard. All right. Next, we have a single copy of Pyroblast to fight the blue decks, which there are. You may have noticed quite a few of in the format. We also have for graveyard hate, Ravenous Trap which is if they put three or more cards into their graveyard from anywhere this turn, it's free to cast, and then you get to exile all the cards from their grave. So the fact that it has black man in the cost is absolutely irrelevant <laughs> in this deck. All right. And on that note, we also have Surgical Extraction to just permanently deal with something. Rather than just wiping their grave, this wipes all of a card from their grave, and their hand, and their deck. Easy enough. For creature decks, especially blue creature decks, like Delver and Infect are the ones that come to mind for me, we run Sudden Shock. This actually also works against Death and Taxes to a good bit. It's Sudden Shock 2 damage, so they can't stop it with Mother of Runes, they can't stop it with a counter spell or a protection effect. Nothing like that works. Sorry, Sudden Shock just says no. If we need to deal with a lot of creatures, a wide variety of creatures, say elves, we have Kozilek's Return. So this one's the slightly easier one to cast, as opposed to the next one we're getting to. Two damage across the field. We don't, we're not actually going to cast Emrakul, so the second bit doesn't matter. It's just a colorless, uh, so that does mean it gets around Mother of Runes, by the way. That's another neat little uh, trick you can do with it. It gets around Mother of Runes' protection effect. 
uh, we have Volcanic Fallout. Can't be countered, 2 damage to each creature and each player. So this is what you might bring in against young Pyromancer decks that often have enough counter spells to keep you from casting Kozlex Return. Note the mana cost though, red red. That does matter. Unfortunately, only having three red sources does matter here. Now, so far I've mentioned these interaction pieces you can use, but you can actually find a combo piece. If you don't have show and tell or sneak attack, you can cunning wish for through the breach. You may have seen this in modern every now and then, or even legacy now, in the mono red sneak list. Yeah, so just puts a creature, it, it does what sneak attack does. That's it. It just it does what Sneak Attack does, but for one turn instead of being on an enchantment. But on an Emrakul, that's often enough. Or with a Grizzlebrand, draw seven cards, maybe 14 cards, you're probably set. You're probably good then. Now, let's say we need to go get an Emrakul, or a Grizzlebrand, or a Show and Tell or Sneak Attack or data. Okay, in that case, we have Intuition. Search your library for any three cards and reveal them to target opponent. Now, it's not gifts ungiven. It's three cards, not three cards with different names. So you can go get three of the same thing. Reveal them to target opponent. Um, yeah, so it does target, in case hexproof is a thing. They choose one, put that card in your hand, and the rest in the grave. So if you get three Emrakuls, two of them are going to the grave and then shuffling right back in. And you'll get an Emrakul. Uh, same thing with Grizzlebrand, etc. So that is the deck that we have right now. This is, I think, a pretty sweet little deck. <laughs> I, I have a lot of fun when I'm playing it. It is deep, it requires quite a good bit of thought, and I love that about this deck. That said, it has some pretty bad matches. You have to worry about death and taxes because, well, for one thing, Caracas. For another thing, taxing effects. Uh, but at the same time, you're able to... Uh, because you're a combo control deck, you can often play against the control deck with your own control elements while being able to outpace them. And that's true in general. You also don't care about decks that would... Think of a deck that would play True Name Nemesis. You just go so far over that deck. Um, that's the long and short of it. I'm sure there are experts that could tell you more about Sneak and Show in general than could I, so I'll leave it up to them to tell you all about that. In the meantime, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.